Hello and welcome everybody to another edition of the Jam and Cheese Show. Cheese, uh, fresh off the win in Perth, but we're just going to put the NRL Rugby League on the back banner because you've been dragged into this as well now. So um, for those listeners uh, that were listening last week, a um, little bit of beef happening with <laughs> PWA, Pro Wrestling Australia, but then someone from the WWE, Grayson Waller has got involved. Let's have a little listen about what he had to say about <laughs> myself and Cheese and yeah, and he doesn't rate the buy round by by all accounts. This is a message for NRL legend, <laughs> James Graham. Now James, a few days ago I heard some whispers. You're on the radio talking some trash about wrestling and about my mates at PWA and I, I, I let it go. I'm a good guy. Grayson Wall a good guy. But then you doubled <coughs> down, James. You went on your cringe podcast, The Buy Round, and you started talking like you belong in the ring. Why? Because 15 years ago, you took some mediocre hit-ups. I ain't impressed. And you're talking about my mates. You're talking about Ricky South. You're talking about Kingsley. You're talking about PWA. I have an issue with that. But I'm not surprised. Because you are part of two of the lowest IQ groups in the world. You're both English and a bulldog. <laughs> and, I, and I'm getting frustrated with these athletes thinking they can do what we do. Why, because you, you watched 30 years ago? Bro, this is a different game now. And trust me when I say you can't compete, especially when it comes to PWA, the best men and women in the world, you could not handle it, I guarantee you. And then, and then you got your little side piece, Brandon Smith. <laughs> Cheese. This one disappoints me because I'm a diehard Roosters fan. I've been a Roosters fan all my life. And hear Brandon Smith gigging along while you talk trash about my home company. But it's okay. Brandon Smith's like the... 23rd best player on the Roosters team, so it could be much worse. But hey, I just want to send this message to you, James, and let you know my boy Ricky South is going to take care of this if you continue to do what you're doing. But please, please don't make me get involved. What do you reckon, Cheese? I'm happy with 23rd. That's a good roster. It is a, it is a great <laughs> it's a, roster. It's a very good <laughs> roster. I'm happy with 23rd. Oh. No, I think it's hilarious, but I'm bloody keen, eh? Mm. <laughs> there, there, there could be something happen. we we actually had a meeting with PWA um, I think look it's always weird getting someone talking about you like that um, <laughs> I didn't think we were talking trash I know <laughs> and, but obviously um, you look Grayson Wallace said those things um, and look he, he's right to, to an extent um, and his criticism of me and my career but I'm comfortable with it I'll just say this Grayson at least I played real sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be shitting mediocre at real sports. Uh, you know. Anyway, that's maybe we could get like a, just a me, tag Grayson. team going on. That's hey, you just look like me. a direct descendant from Seamus, anyway. So. <laughs> 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 I don't think that. Would... Oh. oh dear! Little tables, ladders, chairs, tag team, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but it, but it, it is a little bit strange being, I guess, called out um, on social media, especially. Yeah. <laughs> you want, uh, is that what I'm, I sound like? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't. Geez. So, look, I guess we'll see what Grayson Waller's got to say in return. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it, it is looking likely. We still need to wait to hear from PWA, but they do have, have an event on. Uh, I think the weekend after the grand final, actually. So, mm. something we could look to or look or aim for, perhaps. Cheese, sign you're gonna the have contract, to... big <laughs> sign the contract. You might have to still tell Stacey Jones you're not available <laughs> <laughs> because Robo actually can't play the yeah. GF. On. <laughs> oh no, mate! After the G mate, it's after the GF. <laughs> You'd be sweet. Go on a bend down. Yeah, but I need to train for it. You know what I mean? I need. To, or do I? Yeah. For rap, yeah, yeah, you'll have to train. We'll have to get in sync on what we're going to do. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. On to NRL things. Um, the playoff race now. Um, some people are saying it's over with the Dragons getting that massive victory down in Melbourne. Twenty-five years since they've won down there. That was enormous from the Dragons. Like, not many people would have fancied them at all. Um, they were humbled by Penrith at home. But what this victory could do to their belief system now, they know and they've got the evidence mm. to say we we can beat anyone on our day. Now, coach has been telling us, but now we've got the evidence that they can do it. I thought um, Sloan played really well, 
supposed to be in New South Wales Cup for a little bit longer. Um, but due to some HIAs and some some injuries, he was back at fullback. I thought Benny Hunt and his combination with Jaden Sewell was was first class. And Melbourne missed some opportunities there, but big win for the Dragons and puts them in the eight and looking likely now. It was the first time Dragons have beat Melbourne in Melbourne, basically, because it's 25 years yeah, so 99. when they started pretty yeah. much. 98 yeah. they started, but, um, geez, that's a huge win. I didn't see it coming. I obviously... I was over in Perth, I'm off off the Instagram, and I just checked the the draw coming here on the way, and I just realised uh, Melbourne lost. Mm. I couldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, not but, well, mate, shocked like, everyone. That really, really helps their finals chance. Yeah, like, I think Gold Coast are, are a threat, but they've got a real tough draw coming up. But um, yeah, like you said, the belief and just n- now, so much trust will be going on between that coach and team relationship. You mm. know, it's yeah. You know, the coach is making us do all this hard work. Why is he doing this? Well, now you know why. And there are a chance of the finals after, I don't know, how many years. And the, the uh, thing Dragons last played finals in 2018. I don't know about the Dragons, but they haven't, they didn't sign like a heap of people. You know what Le I mean? Lua, um, two plots. That was mid year, though. Like, oh, like two, mm, three games in. Mm. Uh, Ray for Talamana and Kyle Flanagan. Yeah. <clears throat> Not so, massive yeah. names, though. So like it's a re- probably the biggest name. Yeah, well, Coach Flanagan was the biggest signing. Yeah. And he's had such an impact on them. And the, Well, yeah, he's had an impact on Fatella Mariner. Jesus. Mm. He's had such a good year. But, um, yeah, fortunately enough, they're, they're going real well. And I did pick them in the top eight at the start of the year after everyone laughed at me. Um, so I hope they get, they get the job done. Well, I got the same treatment, Cheese. I picked the Bulldogs to play finals and the Warriors not to. Yeah. And people laughed. And I also was very specific, and I put the dogs at six, which <laughs> I think they technically are. I've well, got them at six, even though they're fifth so on the Cowboys ladder. Cowboys will be... F- well, Cowboys yeah. have got an extra win. Mm. So, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> the team that... Are, or one of the teams that are in competition um, for that spot in the finals is, is the team you beat, the, the Dolphins. Lots of points in that game. Did it... Did it feel a little bit different? Was it because it was over there? Because a couple of weeks in a row now, the Roosters have been involved in some high-scoring games. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know what it was. I just started off so well. But the whole week we talked about respecting um, the Dolphins and the Dolphins are just a, a team that like they're always in the game no matter what, um, no matter who they've got. They've just got like a belief system and um, – we kind of found that out. Maybe at the start of the game, we thought, oh, this is going to be a walkover. But I don't know what happened. Uh, the, the 10 minutes in the bin at the end didn't help at all. That sucked. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, we've still got to, we've got to work on, I guess, capitalising on good starts. At the end of the day, we got the W and um, losing Lindsay, losing Rads um, for 15 minutes, it was uh, – that was probably a big loss for us. And yeah. the bench got shuffled around re- differently, but – there's no really excuses. We just thought at the end of the game the, the Redcliffe Dolphins played well. Like mm. they didn't stop fighting. Um, they played good, um, hard footy. They went toe to toe with us, even though they were down by 18 at, at the start. And um, yeah, you got to just give your props to them. Mate. And then after the game, we went, I had like a booth set up at, at, a, at a pub, rocked up. I told Jesse about the booth. I rocked up about an hour late. All my bottles are gone in the booth and the whole Redcliffe team sitting in there. There's about 20 of them. I walked in and Ray Stone's just staring at me. I'm like, ah, maybe not. You know? <laughs> 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 you- He's got scary eyes, Ray Stone, man. <laughs> Jesus. But, yeah, they they may have lost the battle, but they won the war in the end. <laughs> but hey, Bostock, he was pouring out of my, my own bottle. I, didn't even, I, was, I couldn't believe it. That's not on that. I know. But anyways, we've got the two points. Mate, Sam Walker. Like <laughs> he's a ten mate, year. That you, you go back, you watch that game, you pause it at where Sam Walker gets the offload. Or sorry, someone offloads to Sam Walker. And you think, Oh mate, just pass it to one of your forwards and break it down. Because there's nothing doing. Like n- nothing on. Mm. Absolute zero. You can't no one could say he scores from this position. Mm. 
and like he's 360 <laughs> underneath, makes a break, one on one with Hamaso, and he goes to chip. But you've got to, you can't go too high because then it does it, you won't get it back. Mm. You go too low and then low, and obviously Hammer takes it. It was it was sent. It was millimeter perfect. You, mm. you've, you, your range of you, your range of error is, and then the is down, so like, small. Mate, he nearly knocked himself out scoring it as well. Yeah, yeah. Be, he, the, the put down was. I couldn't believe he got it down. Because I, I, he he didn't know whether he got it or not. Because he must have copped something to the face or something. He's like, oh, I don't know. And then watched it on the replay, and I was like, what? The fuck is this kid? It was on, magnificent man? that try. Well, both were even yeah. like some of the stuff he tried to do. Like he did this one thing where they pass it out. He did like a double stare for the right, and then tried to do a crossfield kick off his left yeah. foot. I was like, man, I couldn't even think about that. Like before or after the game or during the game, I couldn't think of ever dreaming to do something like that. Is he like that in training? Does he yeah. try these things? Yeah, he just it's so annoying. Like if you're doing goal line defense, it's just like chips over the top, chips and scores. You're like, fuck. You know what? Yeah, the knockout confidence, Chuck Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it's. It's a really good tactic. I thought when they changed the rules around the short dropout and mm. um, not being penalised, I thought, oh, we, we won't see teams go for that um, that kick in behind, the short kick. But it's, but it's actually, I think what teams have figured out, it's a really good point of attack. Mm. So if you catch the fullback on the opposite side, kick in behind, even on plays two and three, we've seen a well, lot no, of teams well, figure it out. Like ben Hunt did it to score for Jaden mm. Sewer. That was early in the tackle count. Sam Walker's been doing it for a few weeks. Um, well, I think Reese Walsh did it as well. Yeah. So there's a number of teams that are figuring out, actually, you know what, if we can't break a defence down, let's just kick early. Well, Sammy said to me before the game, he was like, mate, Hammersai gets in the line at fullback a lot during the thing. Just give me the ball if you see him in the line. Yeah. And one of those tries, i just seen him in the line, seen Sammy, he goes, give me the fucking ball. And they, yeah. had, they had a massive overlap in defence, but... I was like, all right, I gave it to him and then he set up a try or he grabbed it through. I was like, so he's he's onto those things. Yeah. Like, was that the one where he where it was on the first was on one. the opposite side of the road on yeah. the on the short he was on the short side plugging the numbers? Yeah. So he was like hammer, hammer, yeah. and I looked over yeah. and I, I was gonna go to kids because the, the numbers were off. Yeah. And then he was like, hammer, hammer. I looked at him and he's like, give me the fuck gave it to him, try. I was like, uh, yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah. But I, like I, it was something you are... he tipped up to me before the game. Like he already knew that stuff. Like he's got more talent than in his pinky toe than I have. But like, if he can balance out that talent and that hard work and the grit of the game, fuck, he's gonna be a good player. Yeah. Well, he already he already is. Um, it was a magnificent performance mm. from him. It, like, it was. Weird. And he's been good for weeks now. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? He's he's been playing the best footy I've ever seen him play. So. Mm. I he, mate, he's he put. Puts bums on seats. He, mm. he makes people tune in. You know, he's highlight real stuff. Mm. But he's... Like even last week when he bumped off what? Yeah. Josh Alloa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did cost me a try, though. If you guys watch back where he passed the ball to Teddy on the inside. You were there. I was on the left. And it's like the first time in 100 plays I've supported a halfback making a line break. And I thought it was my time, mm. man. What a shit house. But, like, if you've got a breakaway and you're hearing... Teddy's voice or yeah. Brandon's voice. I think you're inclined to go to Teddy, but mm. I was I was scoring under the post. Uh, the Bulldogs flying. I'm um, made up. Great scenes at Belmore yesterday. Um, and so pleased, not just for every Bulldogs fan, but for those that have been through thick and thin because it's been a difficult couple of years. Um, some, res some results that have been... Poor. Um, I'm just delighted for everyone there. Great scenes at Belmore yesterday. Stephen Crichton, what a leader! I don't, yeah, mate. I'm I'm stoked for them. I'm stoked for Stephen. I'm stoked for Josh. But did you have you seen like some of the videos and the scenes of after the game? Yeah. When the boys driving through the mm. on the road, how crazy is that? Like that looked like a college football NFL yeah. sort of setup. Um, so that area is obviously super proud of where the boys are at and. Like the sky is the limit for them at the moment, I think. I think they can give the comp a red hot crack. They've lost to us by, they've beat us, lost to us by what six or something, mm. and then they lost to Penrith by six. Like those are games you can win. I think. I think their best performance was against the Panthers. Mm. I really do. 
Um, you know what? Looking at those scenes yesterday, I know it pays the bills to play at a core. But geez, if we if the dogs played at Belmore every week. Oh. That was insane. I couldn't and believe the, it. I saw it on Josh Shadow uh, Josh Shadow Cars. Um, someone sent it to me. It was like his Instagram. Yeah. And it was just like him in the car, every the, you couldn't see anything but people and just surrounding his car playing drums, like had these big like trumpets out and mm. everything. I couldn't believe it. it was, yeah. Um that's where I want the footy this game to go, like yeah. in that direction. It would be cool if yeah. we could play there every week. And obviously you understand it's a business, but Jeez, that would be exceptional. Also, big shout out to Josh Papalihi on making this 300th. I think that mm. is uh, a magnificent feat um, from such a tremendous competitor. And what a player. And congratulations to Josh. To Josh, um, The Warriors. Mm. Mate, I don't know about you, but I, f I thought they let themselves down. Like, season on the line, home, full house again mm. against a team that, you know, we're looking to tap. Like, not, like, that was awful. I know they had a really disappointing game against Gold Coast a few months ago now, but that was dreadful from the Warriors. They just, yeah. they lacked desperation. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't get to watch the game, but I saw the, the result and, uh, I don't know, like, I don't even know who was playing. Was Sean Johnson back? Or? Yeah, he was back, but they just, they they, they lack they looked like they lacked that little bit of hunger that little bit of fight to fight for their season because if they'd have won that game they'd they'd be in touching distance they'd be nine wins one draw not that far and they lost to a para team that just you know mm. like yeah the para did all it right is, but they've got every excuse over there at the warriors they you know if warriors are the they started really well as well. They, they just couldn't convert field position into points, but then they just went away and lacked desperation. Mm. And, yeah, it's it's not too dissimilar to the situation at the Broncos, the like the Warriors' huge disappointment this season. Um, after a, so much expectation, they, they added to their roster, but they've just been... They've lost a couple of close games that I think they'll regret, but they've been a massive letdown. Yeah, the Bronco. I don't know. The Broncos is more shocking to me than the yeah. Warriors. Uh, the Warriors have been riddled with injuries. So are the Broncos, but they've still got strike all over mm. their team. Um, yeah, and th if you were to say right now, what is it, round 23, the, yeah. the Broncos are the worst Queensland team in the comp. Yeah. Is, that is crazy. It uh, is. <laughs> you, well, you know what else is crazy? The bottom four has the last three losing grand finalists. So Eels, they lost 2022. South lost 2021. And Broncos lost 2023. They, they all sit within the in the bottom four. Jimmy, that's... Hold on. That's actually crazy. So it's looking like you don't want to make the grand final these days. <laughs> well, you, don't want to make, you don't want to make it and lose. Um, because obviously Penrith are just... Yeah, all, all mm. class. Um the Broncos, the, they look like a team that are just on edge mm. and so nervous and confidence is completely shot. Did you, did you see any of that game? Uh, no. But you, you know, the, the idea that um, Reynolds should step down as captain was muted a couple of weeks ago and I think, I think I'm warming to that now, especially for next year. Um, I think you need a captain that's going to train. I don't think Reynolds trains enough with his injuries. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to focus on getting his body right. Um, and not all the off-field stuff that comes with me and the skipper. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be a real refresher for, for him. He can concentrate on getting his body right. He doesn't train every day of the week anyway. It's my understanding that he doesn't. So I think as your captain, you, you you need to be there for the majority of the sessions and get a feel for everything that's going on. Um, is it going to solve everything? I don't think so. But, but it's one area that I think may just help that little bit. Um, but 
I, I feel for it, so it's, it's weird, eh? That yeah. like not training is the the approach to it. I think his body's just. And mm. you know what? Maybe, no, I understand, but maybe like, credit Jared's to, the same. Like mm. he's he's got, but he's in the gym every single day. Yeah, but longer than anyone. You know what I mean? Like he's, yeah, he's got heaps of injury, but he's. He's in every day. He's in the gym until we start training, until we finish training. He's whether it's stretching, mm. like, like he he's comes across as this big nasty guy, but ultimate professional. Yeah, and like there's a reason he's, mm. you know, I think maybe that's what you mean by approach yeah. to looking after your body. Yeah. So he so it's it's hard to be have an influence on the team unless you you're around in, you're around and in the training sessions. If you focus on getting your body right. You kind of got to be a bit selfish and you don't go into the team sessions. Mm. So you're getting your body right on your own. And then I reckon it's hard to to come into the team on a game day and get the full understandings of it. It's just one little mm. thing. I've got to feel for for yeah. Kevy because I think he's a, a really good person, clearly a great coach that took them to the, the GF last year. Um it's yeah. going to be a huge off season for them. They've got to, they've got to get their shit together and start the season mm. well next year. I'm not like pissing in Jazz's pocket, but like you were saying, influence. Like I'm walking into training, seeing him drip and sweat already. Yeah, like that's already an influence on me. Yeah, knowing that he he's not playing for the next four weeks, mm. but his presence is is an influence, and maybe that's something he still comes into team meetings and has his input. Um. He doesn't train with us out on the field, but when we get back in, he's still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like lockers packed up, he's gone. Yeah. Or he'll come out and watch, and same thing. Like, those little things just make you want to, I guess, do more at training, yeah. or, you know what I mean? And and he gives the advice that you need to give in team meetings because he's got plenty of it, and um, maybe that's the, the route because I think even though Jared's not playing or he doesn't have any involvement in the game – somehow throughout the week he influences you yeah. to do better. I think as well being captain, you, you especially at a big club like the Broncos, you'd have so many off-field obligations that it might impact your ability to get your body right because you, oh, I've got this promo at one o'clock. Well, mm. or, or you have to do media every week. Like mm. those are the little things that you can just take away from your life and focus on getting your body right to play. When Adam Reynolds plays well, Broncos usually play well. And I know he's been out for a long time, but he's not been the same player since coming back, really. He hasn't. Um, but the flip side, the Gold Coast Titans, you know, the immediate story is, well, the Broncos season's done, but the, the the Titans, had they started the season better, they'd be right in the mix for the playoffs, and they were sensational. I mean, one more game. win. Like, <laughs> if they have one more win, yeah, uh, that's like a... Like, one win is huge now. Yeah, like huge for every team. Um, one win for us is like a a good start to top four. But one more win, um, one two losses is we're out of the top four. Yeah, <laughs> like it's the, yeah. Well, the I guess the the Titans will believe that they can do it. The good thing that they are like yeah, they've got difficult games, but they're all difficult games. But they got form. They're mm. in good form. Where a lot of those other teams fighting for the eight or it. it there's like five or six teams. They're out of form. Warriors out of form. Broncos out of form. Um, Dolphins out of form. Newcastle out of form. Mm. Like that, they they can't get their shit together. The Dragons are up and down. Obviously coming off a big win, but you know the Titans. I think they've won five from their last six. So they're absolutely flying. And Keanu Keeney, what a player! Mm. Man, he th there was a play where Corey Oates jammed in. And he stopped and moved up to the outside of him. And then he passes the ball to Jojo for fear. It was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. How did you, how were you running and so he's fast? Still, he's still so young, he's eh? Like 19, 20, 21. I think he's my little brother's age. So he, he's one of my little brother's good mates. Mate, he is a player. Um, well, the game Cowboys comfortably beat the Tigers. That was, you wouldn't want to, Get a copy of that game and watch it any time in the future. It is um, Cowboys just it, if the Cowboys can get their shit together defensively, they'll give it a crack. But if not, who knows? Same with the Sharks. They need to. They're in in the top four at the moment. If they're just going to get their shit together, they were poor mm. against the Rabbitohs and jagged to win. Trindle 
um, hopefully isn't too bad, but they, I think they might rest him with that hamstring strain. They don't want to lose him and Nico, other, otherwise they, they could be in some strife. Um, yeah, I, mean, I can't really say anything because I'm in the same boat with the Roosters at the moment. Like we're, we're winning games the last two weeks. We're winning games, pretty good competition, but they're just ugly. Yeah. <laughs> they're just ugly wins. Now, there, there are a few teams, well, there's a lot of teams like that at the moment where you think, just get your shit together and well, things will be so much better. Um, anyway, we'll get on to uh, some questions from the listeners. Jeez, we've got quite a few to get through, some good ones as well. Uh, what, first one from Daniel Wood. Uh, what would your wrestling outfit be, Jammer? Definitely, definitely can't go uh, like Budgie Smuggler style. No. Why? Shameless. Uh, they're just... Mate, it's a bit of a one of those from school. Like, you never wear what we would call ball stranglers. Mm. Like, boxers only. If you got caught at school in a pair of what were referred to as ballies, <laughs> that you ain't living that down. So... Yeah, I, I, I could, I'm not going to go... I'm not going to betray me for myself and start wearing ball stranglers. Um, or budgies as they're known over here so that's out i think some tassels would be good oh, in and around the arm tassels? you know like a bit of like tape and then like you know, the <laughs> thing like almost like you'd, you'd need what? a you'd need a mountain of tape i reckon oh but no it's like not a, just for the outfit just to get the body rolling <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tape around the arms with tassels like the little what what would uh, what would the, like, the, like, like the indian bit, sort of almost like uh yeah like little bit not string like little like ultimate yeah, warrior, yeah, like a little yeah, bit yeah. not tinsel you know what i mean like yeah, I know what you mean like now. something flapping off the arms hmm. um maybe maybe like Kurt angle style wrestling like you know you've got short shorts but like straps over uh or maybe like a pair of pants john cena he's with the denim shorts no <laughs> the three-quarter denim shorts no no restrict your flexibility um maybe Maybe pair, maybe pair of pat, like tights, mm -hmm. pair of boots. Wouldn't they be considered ball stranglers? No, pair of tights. No, but yeah, but they're, they're strangling your balls. No, that no, 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 no. It's more the look that you like those type of undies. So you're insecure. No, just from <laughs> my, where, where, where we grew, where we grew up, that that. Oh big, yeah, big, it's a big huge. No. Mate, in New Zealand, it's a huge no no. Mm. Like Jess, Jesse Brom, he always says like. If he wears budgies all the time here, but if he was to go to Manurewa, South Auckland, and wear budgies, yeah, you're, you're dead. De yeah, <laughs> it's the same back home. Yeah, you're, I only you're used, gone. I only used to wear them for 40, game, so game, game day only. Yeah, game day only. A pair but of it's the culture jocks. here. Yeah, like, budgie smugglers is culture. Oh, I know. It's a bit but weird. if I was to wear my, I've actually started a little bit of a trend on Waikiki. Actually, shout out to the Waikiki Rams. Won the grand final yesterday. Ah, good on them. Yeah. What, what trend have you started there? Well, people wear my budgies over there now. Oh, your own budgies? Mm. Well, Blimey. my budgies made by budgies, but budgies. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We, uh, can I? You know when you went to school, were you one strap or two straps on your bag? Two straps. Where you see that back home? <laughs> if you got, like... You yeah, to, then yeah. At the, at, well, at my school, if you laughed at me, you're getting... You're yeah, getting, well, exactly. You're getting smoked yeah, up. I know this is, this is, <laughs> this is the thing, but... but at other schools, if you did one strap, it was like, hey, handbag. <laughs> like, no. You, no two, like, two strap. I, I, two strap sometimes I'd wear one strap, but it wasn't, like, convenient. If I'm trying to haul ass because I'm probably late for training or school and I've got to double up and start running, I can't run with one strap. Oh, mate, you street cred's worth more than that. I'd be <laughs> hauling ass with I one strap. I was already at the top of the food <laughs> chain at my school, Jimmy, the street cred. You, you set the... Set the trend. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it was. If if Brandon's wearing one strap, then we we, we, all, we all need to follow. Soon. I went to a school. Not no no big Polynesians at my school. So I was just about as big as it got. Really? <laughs> on what? Yeah. Did you go to school on Waikiki? Yeah. Or? Well, my primary school. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, I went like grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, and and Waikiki as well. But I was when I was younger. I there's a guy named Hugo. And it, we were playing bull rushing because I was a lot better than everyone on Pike yet. Like, really, like, I would be the last one in every time. And this one guy, Hugo, who was like six foot in grade six, 
he like slapped the back of my head and because like he couldn't tackle me and I walked up and just <laughs> clocked him at school and I was a young fella and I clocked him and he just went down like a sack of shit and he was the biggest guy at school and then from there I was just I was like I was that guy man don't mess with <laughs> don't don't mess I with Brandon that <laughs> that's quality um let's have a look oh this is a good one if they had to play the next round which of the current coaches would you pick and which which would be the best and which would be the worst? So they had to play a game of NRL. Obviously, Wayne Bennett would be pretty funny. <laughs> they uh, reckon Wayne Bennett was a madman trainer, right? Eh? Like, oh, he still is? Yeah, he used to run with the boy. Like, I think Craig Bellamy used to run with them as well. I think he mm. learned that from Wayne. But he was like top three, Craig. <laughs> At like in preseason, he'd be and when they do the running and that, it'd be top three every time. I think you, Trent Trent uh, Barrett looks like he's still got yeah. got it in him. Yeah, probably Trent Barrett. I reckon you could be right there. Um, oh, I don't reckon. De, I reckon Desert. I reckon Desert struggle. Uh, Trent Barrett, Robbo, he struggles. Oh, <laughs> Robbo struggle. But he Rob just climbed base camp Mount Everest. Oh, Fitzy would he wouldn't struggle? I reckon. I reckon he's be snapping right. blokes. But I reckon Trent purely on age because Father Time yeah is undefeated. Ricky Stewart, I reckon he, deep down, reckons he's still got it. Mate, we want to we want to set up a no limit. Get Ricky Stewart, Ricky Stewart versus Craig Bellamy in the ring. I'd love to see it. That'd be brilliant. Get it donated to Ricky Stewart's charity. It'd be awesome. But Craig said he'd do it for fifty k. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. If we can get this out in the public. Well, it this is, was it like, is, it is this in the public four years ago when I was <laughs> Four years ago on the piss talking shit to him. I don't know if it was true. Mm. Um, should the Dragons v. the Bulldogs game be moved to Allianz Stadium? Uh, from Mark Baker 01. What's going to be a sellout of Cogger? <sighs> no, it shouldn't. Oh, what, what was the question? Should the, well, the Dragons are playing the Bulldogs this week. Uh, and it's at Cogra. And they're saying, should you move it to Allianz so more people can come? Look, I get it, but... oh, It's not a home game, though, if it's at Allianz, is it? Well, the, yeah, the Dragons wouldn't... Cogra is a, a spiritual home ground yeah. for them. I reckon it takes away the... It, for the everyday fan, it'd be great. Could you get more people there? But the Dragons would lose a bit of an edge that they've got by playing at Cogra. Mm. Yeah. I think... You've got a point there, but then we've just been speaking about how good it was to be a packed house at Belmore versus like taking any of those games to a core. Yeah, and it, especially now Dragons are in the eight. Yeah. You'll you'll see that'll be that'll sell out. Oh, it will it will be. I think it the, might the even. Perth Stadium, mate, that was unreal, actually. The was weather it? was unreal the whole time I was there. Like they said pack heaps of winter gears. It's pissing down with rain all week. It didn't rain once. The last two days were absolutely beautiful as mm. well. They'll get they'll get a team, won't they? Yeah, I think the the people from the thing were in our locker after the game, trying to just yeah, because I heard them speak with the coaches and they were pretty adamant to get a bit of a push from Robbo mm. and from. Wayne. I think Luke Carey's. Yeah, Wayne, 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 <laughs> give, Wayne give them nothing, and Robbo was like, "Yeah." Perth's great. It's like, <laughs> yes, working for the Perth Tourist Board. Uh, yeah, oh, geez. Last one from Carter Wallace. Which Olympic doubles event do you think us two could win? There's a reason we're not in the Olympics. Um, what could we win? What are the doubles events? Tennis, uh, tennis no. Rowing, no. I, I look. I reckon badminton probably something. If we if we had enough time to train, we could maybe mix it with the best. What just get called out by a couple of badminton people now? Like we've been called out by wrestlers, so we need to try. No, badminton with no chance. I used to get clapped up at school by this guy who was not an athlete. Yeah, but he he knew what he was doing with the badminton racket. Beach volleyball. Beach volleyball? No. Depends on the uniform. Again, <laughs> can't wear budgie smugglers. 
Um, beats. Diving, no way. <laughs> Tony, are you I'm mad? I'm good at diving. <laughs> uh, Synchronised <I>, diving. <laughs> mate, do you know what? I think we're screwed. I don't think we're... I don't think we're getting Mate, if anywhere. I thought we were a genuine chance of anything in the doubles in the Olympics, I'd be going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We would, it, I'd yeah, love a gold medal. We wouldn't be sat here now <laughs> discussing it. We'd be already doing it. But um, <laughs> I think that's about all we've got time for. What's I the, think uh, like our best chance is rowing. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. I think that's our best chance if we train for like a yeah, year. Yeah, that's but, probably where we'd both be naturally suited, Yeah, that physical endurance. Um, but mate, do, do you ever think like you you know you go pretty hard in your training, and then you see like them run the fifteen hundred, and you're like, that's like, yeah, they're doing it in like two minutes thirty a k. It's a joke. It's insane. Mm. Like it's actually it's insane. actually stupid. It it we we, I, we I, couldn't I, keep up the ten k. The ten k is like running a hundred meters for fourteen. The record is like running a hundred meters for fourteen seconds, like a hundred yeah, times yeah, straight. Yeah, like I'm flat out running at thirteen full tilt. Yeah, they're like oh, they're almost sprinting the whole way yeah. around. It we have honestly, you respect to those yeah. athletes, man. Like it'd be actually disrespectful to say we're a chance at anything. Yeah, it, we're up to <laughs> nowhere near. Like nowhere near. Yeah, like except the, wrestling. Maybe <laughs> I could go on that PWA. I think I'm a chance in that. <laughs> but like actual sport, I don't know. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Grayson Moore is going to be <laughs> gonna you're, you're going to be you're going to be relegate he's going to be petitioning yeah, but he for thought you. 23rd was bad yeah <laughs> oh, have you seen the roster at St Roosters mate they're uh, unreal what's on for the the bye cheese nah not much actually Mr. got a full time job now so I'm not really allowed to go anywhere without it um, <laughs> I, I, why, why not <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't mean like go, I just go like, like leave her at home and go to oh, Bali and chill oh, out. You right. know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant like you're not allowed to go to like the shop or something. <laughs> no, nah, I'd just be sticking around. Um, not much to do really. Just get the body right. Oh, yeah, my I had a cortisone on the shoulder today. It's absolutely caning me right now. So, actually, I just brought a new gaming PC. I've got to go pick it up after this. What? What's that? It's like a. Uh, like a computer, but it does like a like a like a like you know like a old school PC. Yeah, yeah. Those. Why, why didn't you just get like a PlayStation or an Xbox? Because the PCs they run now are like Prima. it's like gaming times four. Like it's really it'd, yeah, it'd be like four times more powerful than a PS Five. What what games are you into? Fortnite, COD, Valorant, Diablo. Well, I'm a gamer. Oh yeah, are you like fully? Do you, do you watch gamers that upload their content to like YouTube and stuff? Yeah. I watch, mate, like Joey Manu plays this game. It's like Grand Theft Auto, but every person in the game, it's called 5M or something like that. But every person in the game has a role. So it's not, there's no NPCs, which are like, like fake characters. Like every player is a character. Yeah. Like you can be a copper. And you can arrest Joey and stuff like that, and it's and you got to get a job and do real life stuff. It's so funny, and I watched Joey play, and I think I'm going to join his gang. All right. Yeah. So, well, that's why I need the PC because you can't play games like that on. Yeah. Thing. I mean, I, I'm. And it's weird because Joey talks in a full English accent the whole time. You've got to get some clips up of it. It's, what you, What do you mean? Oh, when like he's, you know the Roadman, like like when he's playing his character. Yeah, so he's got the mic, everything. Because yeah. you need a mic to um, yeah. play the game because you're talking to real people around the world and you can load, like, the city. So if, say, we're in S Sydney, you can load the Sydney city and you're walking around in Sydney doing, like... <laughs> doing whatever you want. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy. It's just a role-playing game. That's where I would think the AI and the virtual reality will go. It'll just be, like, games like that. You'll have little floors you can run on without actually moving. But, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And he talks like a roadman. You know what a roadman is? You're a pommy. Like that, um, like gangster pommy sort of. Like talk. Cockney. I don't know. How do you? Like, uh, you, like you don't know roadman? 
from where it's so that's how Joey talks the whole time. It used to it used to be a Colombian drug lord actually in, in the game. It's not a, in real no, life. No, not in the game. And he used to talk like a Colombian boat. <laughs> Get in the van, I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he would talk. Man, I used to be like so into my um, Pro Evolution Championship manager. Mm. A um, little bit of Grand Theft Auto, Silent Hill. Yeah, now the FIFA, it's gone away from sort of team managing. Now it's everyone plays, but you're only the one character. Oh, that would drive me in. Nuts. But you play with all your mates, so it's like 11 of you. Yeah. But Just go and play 11 I, side. I, I, I yeah. hate, though, because I, I hate it because I don't like relying on other people when no. it comes to gaming. No. Lose I, the ball and you're dead. I um, I, I don't I, – I didn't make a, a conscious decision to not game anymore, but it just sort of happened and, yeah, I, I had to put that – I've done that about six times in my life. Le- left the game and scene and come back in. <laughs> Mm, I can see why it's very addictive. Yeah. Um, all right, cheese. Well, that's what we got time for, mate. You go and get your PC stoked mm. up, and uh, I'm I, I want, I'm looking forward to fig- finding out the the character that you create and <laughs> what what this job is that you're going to do, and you're mooching around Sydney. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll catch you next week. See you, boys. <laughs>